VIP access. VIP access with Aniko on Africa Loud. Welcome to episode 14 of VIP Access. This is where I speak to various creatives and artists from Kenya and around Africa about the amazing work they're doing. Today, it's a huge honor for me to be speaking to one of Kenya's best FEMCs. She's one of the dopest rappers in the game at the moment. She's also a dope singer and songwriter. I want to speak to her about dabbling in all and excelling in everything she touches. Introducing none other than Mandy Ooh. Ulekabaya. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, what's up, babe? Thank you so much. Oh, thank you so much for coming to VIP Access. Thank you for having me. It's so great to see you, to, to meet you for you the too. first time. Finally. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. Um, Where do we even start? Like first, how are you doing? How are you feeling? How has 2023 been um to you so far? Uh, I feel good. Um, Very relaxed for the first time. I'm not worrying about much. Yeah? Yeah. Like for the first time in your career or for the first time this week or the first time <laughs> in the industry? Just in general, <laughs> with everything, my career, my personal life, I'm just like at ease. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. And what do you think brought this about? Um... I'm not quite sure, but I feel like everything that I set out to do last year mm. um, came to pass. Mm. So now, like, I just want to take a break, take some time, mm. breathe, and then now get back to the hustle. Okay, okay. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I'm very happy to speak to you, to see you, to to be to get, to have this opportunity to interview you. Mm -hmm. um, you officially got into the music industry professionally from 2016. Yeah. Um, your first album, Kabaya, came out in 2019, yeah. just at the verge of COVID. Then Frisky came out in 2020. Um, I wanted to find out before 2016, getting mm -hmm. into the industry, mm -hmm. what were you doing? Where were you? Um, and what prodded you to finally take that huge step and say, okay, I'm doing this professionally. I want to make a name for myself and mm -hmm. I want to produce records. Um, before 2016, I was in high school. Oh, <laughs> so baby, you're reading. <laughs> I was fighting for my life in boarding school, yeah. but um, before that, and, I and always, which boarding school? I was in Moy Girl School, Nairobi. Uh -huh. Yeah. Were you rapping over there? I was. I was. I used to write. And I have my friend, my deskmate, listen to some of the songs. Of course, she couldn't understand what I'm doing, but um, she was very supportive, still mm. is. Um, but prior to even me doing my final exams, I always knew I wanted to be in entertainment. I wasn't mm -hmm. sure if I was going to be a musician, but I just knew I want to be an entertainer. And you were already rapping. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. And... Fast forward, um, so you finish your school and mm -hmm. exams in 2016 or 2015? 15. Okay. Yeah. And then straight up, you went out in 2016, just started doing your thing. Yeah, I started out as a DJ, actually. Mm -hmm. So I DJed from uh, 2015. My first record was in 2016, November. Mm. And then that's when I decided, yeah, I'd rather be doing music instead than be a DJ mm. yeah and who are the first people you met in the industry who you would say were very instrumental to helping you find a footing yeah because it's a big bad um, world out mm. here sometimes yeah. and especially when you're starting out and meet the wrong people mm -hmm. who take advantage of you and so on and so forth yeah yeah um <clears throat> in that time I didn't have many people I had this uh producer was GKV but he stopped producing mm. um he helped me for a while till around 2017 and then he left Nairobi for good so from then it was just me and my producer friend is mm. called rock um but I didn't quite get around industry people mm. till just recently I think last year actually really yeah why was it because you're like brand new or you didn't have like uh, um, maybe like um, a close member of your team who mm -hmm. already knew some of the industry people. So you're trying to find your own way. But why would you say only last days when you kind of got close to a lot of industry people? Um, I never quite understood why it worked out the way it did. Mm -hmm. I think the first like 
solid industry person I met was Ivan, the director. Yes. Yeah, and that was in 2018, I think. Okay. Towards the end of 2018. And at least um, from meeting him, he told me, do this, be like this, brand yourself, um, make this kind of music. Like, he was my first contact mm. with that environment, yes. you know. But I, I don't quite understand why I never got around anyone mm. who... I could guide me and tell me, but I don't mind it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, so you kind of just found your way around yeah. things yeah. and continue to do that. Yeah. So how then did you come to meet, you know, the likes of Ndovu Ku, um, mm -hmm. Brida, you know, Sauti So, yeah. and even be able to work with them? Or do they see you somewhere always and be like, oh, you're dope. We want to yeah. do something with you because... Mm -hmm. I like I mean you're dope. You yeah. know, from the time your debut album came out and second one, mm. you know, you just been spitting fire <laughs> always. <laughs> always. Um for for some of them, again, most of them I met last year. Mm. Um 2021. Yeah. Towards the end of 2021. Okay. Uh, but for someone like Brida, we, we grew up together for really? like 10 plus years. <gasps> yeah. We knew each other even way before. We started doing music, which is insane. Um, That's but for nice. yeah, it's nice. <laughs> for the likes of Dovuku, I was just calling them. Like yeah. me, I have a lot of self awareness and self confidence. If I call you and you agree <laughs> to hop on a record, cool. If you don't, so you move regardless. Yeah. yeah. So for them it was just a phone call. It, mm. There was no prior relationship to that. It was just, hey, um, Mandy, I have this record, can you yeah. Mm. Just that, and the and the idea um, and plan to release, you know, both your albums mm -hmm. was that something you um, specifically chose for yourself, mm -hmm. or how did you decide? Like, I want to come out and put out um, these albums in this time because mm -hmm. a lot of artists take you know time to release albums because they feel like, oh, let me put out a lot of EPs, yeah. and have a lot of success hits, and then mm. later I'll have an album or let me just do um, an EP or mixtape, especially for rappers. Yeah. But I think how you came out for me as somebody in media and PR made me look at you like um, she seems quite organized like with her career with her sounds because when you like, see an artist produced like an album yeah it's a good opportunity for them to show you who they are yeah so i feel like through your albums i got to know you well as a rapper as opposed to other rappers who might be new and mm -hmm. they don't have an album out yeah um for the first album it's more or less what you just said mm -hmm. i wanted to put out a body of work and tell people um this is me, this is who I am, this is that's actually where Kabaya stemmed from, mm. actually. Um, for me, it was just for people to become aware of me because I realized they couldn't get that from just one single every exactly. month. Exactly. I just wanted to give them a body of work that they could listen to and under understand who I am and understand mm. my experiences. But for the second one, I wanted to show that I am very diverse because mm. there's a certain sound people got accustomed to when they hear the name Mandy or Kabaya. And yes. I wanted to just shy away from that for a while mm -hmm. and give them more. Because if you listen to the album, it's not just one sound. Yes. There's there's a lot of sounds involved. Mm. And yeah, I just didn't want to be boxed into this one genre because mm. I know I'm much more than that. Yes. And, and how has you know, the albums or the industry taking your, uh, your um, I mean, how has the industry and the fans and everyone t mm -hmm. um, received the albums? Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, both the albums, has it been successful in your eyes? Mm -hmm. um, are there any other things that you would have done differently with, with the specific albums and the releases? Mm -hmm. Or are you happy so far with, um, you know, what you've done and how they've been received? Um, for the second album, for the first album, I didn't have any expectations, mm. to be honest. But um, people loved it. People loved the songs. They still have their favorites from that album. But for the second one, I felt like maybe I didn't do as much as I should have mm -hmm. in the position that I was in. But um, for me, it was just a learning experience. Um, especially with things like, like writing and... and um, choosing sounds and who to work with mm. and pushing boundaries really. But I feel like maybe I would have done more in mm. terms of promo 
Because you find a lot of people know about my first album yes. more than they do about the second album. Mm. So maybe for me, I just assumed that, ah, see, I'm in a better position now. More people yeah, yeah, know, they'll yeah. find it where they'll yeah. find it. But yeah, I was wrong. <laughs> but, th- but that means then that you feel at this point in time that, mm. like, um, you know, better PR and branding is, yeah, is it's very important. important. It's very important. Um, see, the thing is, Again, with with people like me, there's not um, a f- there's not one person I can call and go, oh hey, I have this. What do you think I can go? How do you think I can go about it? I have an album. Is there any way I should? For us, especially the young ones in the industry, it's just you release your music, share it on your IG, on your TikTok, on your yeah, like that's literally all we know. Jeez. We don't have this this guidance of you have a release, yeah. plan for it 30 days mm. prior, plan for it, do this, do that. Do you have um, press picks? Do you have this? Yeah, yeah, do you yeah. have that? Like, I had to learn about all of that after I released mm. my album. And that's why for me, I feel like it was a, more of a learning experience than just releasing a body of work. Because now at least I'm like 50% aware of, of what I should be doing. Mm. But then that's where there's a gap. Most definitely. Yeah. There still is a huge gap in yeah. that sense. And I think when I hear what you're saying, it just shows me that it's so much work for me and for the other PR people who yeah. work with artists. Yeah. You know, for somebody like you to be saying, I didn't know this and mm-hmm. someone should have told me or let me know. So, yeah. I mean, for me, I try as much as possible to... Uh, to play my part. So yeah. I think now that we've connected and now that I've had, like, there's an interest for you to have better PR and branding, yeah. always feel free to let me know. Um, yeah, I think there's a time for everything. I, I always, Definitely. like, see you and so part of your team members sometimes send me stuff. Yeah. So I think um, so far, not so bad. Because so even bad. though you're, like... <laughs> I've We're been still floating. struggling doing yeah. these things. I always receive emails like when you have a new song or video. So yeah. I, I appreciate that there are artists who don't even send anyone anything. Yeah. So at least um, you've been present and uh, visible in that sense. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And so I wanted to ask in terms of rap, mm-hmm. what kind of rapper are you? <laughs> <laughs> like what kind what of state ki- what kind, what of, kind of state of mind are you in when you're mm. writing your lyrics or when you're in the studio speaking yeah. and recording or uh-huh. even when you're on stage like what kind of state of mind are you in for me <laughs> to be quite honest I just write about what I'm going through uh-huh. or what I've seen or what I've been around for me it's much easier that way because mm. like I, I find it absurd to be writing about Lamborghinis and having cash in my car and stuff like that. And it's not something I do. But yeah. if I see someone doing something and I think, ha, that's a that's a rhyme, mm. I do it. For me, I don't overthink what I'm writing about unless now it's a conscious verse. Mm. Now then that's a whole different dynamic. But I'm just here for the vibes, man. <laughs> nice. Is there a specific song or mm-hmm. rap of yours that you really dig? Ah, uh, man. Or line. Or line. Yeah, or song. See, here's the thing. Every time someone asks me that, I forget all my songs, <gasps> all oh my, my verses. God. It's, it's like, like an entire black yeah, it's like you. when someone asks you, tell me about yourself, and you're like, oh my God. Where do I start? <laughs> yeah. Um, if, if there's or, a or is there really a song like, like you enjoy performing, or that one song uh, that your fans really yeah. Get down to when it's like fun yeah. to do it every time. I like I like my song Hivina Hivo. Oh, I yes. like the verses, both of them. Um, each other song. I like Sirudi Home mm. very much. Um, especially the original. I know I'm supposed to have a bias for the remix, but I really love the original. It's dope. Yeah. The, the 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 beat itself is dope. Too. Yeah. 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 Who produced it? Um, it was a collaboration between uh, my producer Metro and yeah. Lucas. Nice, nice. Yeah. They really hit the nail on the head with yeah. that one. Yeah, they yeah. did. Those are, I feel like those are some of the you know hit songs that made you a big name in the yeah, industry. Yeah, they did. They you did. Know. Yeah. Um. Cool. 
So I wanted to speak also about like family and friends. Mm-hmm. That, did your family always support you getting into music? Mm-hmm. And um, I think you mentioned friends always were supportive even in school. Yeah. How is that looking now? Uh, first of all, my mom is my biggest fan. Oh, that's so nice. My biggest fan. I will upload a photo and she's the first one to like <gasps> it. I release a song. She's the first one to oh. watch it. She's She's very supportive. That's nice. Um, and I think that's one of the things that at least keeps me going. Yeah. Because I know I have, I have support from home. Yeah. So is my sister. My sister comes for at least most of my shows. Nice. Uh, my family also same way, very supportive. Mm. My friends are very supportive. I have a tribe. Let's just say I have a tribe that's, that's nice. That's backing me and, and cheering that me on daily. That is very nice. Yeah. That's very nice. And, um... In terms of moving forward, because your brand, your image, your mm-hmm. uh, your name is fast growing. Yeah. You know, even if you look at the trajectory from 2016, 2019 till now, wow, it's just like yeah. you've done quite a lot for yourself at a short period of time. Mm-hmm. So what would you like to achieve, you know, in the coming years? Because um, you're still new to a lot of people and yeah. you will continue to, you know, do dope stuff and all that. But what's what's the point for you? Um, for me, I think for now, it's just to grow my fan, fan base within Kenya. Mm-hmm. But mostly also East Africa. Okay. And then now from there, we, we, move, yeah. we, yeah, we move. I don't see myself... Um, limiting my craft to only Kenya. Mm. I, j- I want to Grow see where, yeah, way beyond. Yeah, way beyond. Yeah. And what's your opinion about these conversations, you know, when people say Kenyans don't have dope female rappers mm-hmm. um, and so on and so forth, or female artists in, in, in Kenya are like, I don't know, sleeping or mm. whatever. What's your opinion on that? Um, first of all, I would just like to note that the Kenyan music industry is not an industry that's supportive of its musicians, mm. first of all. So imagine um, factoring in the fact that you're a woman. It's just another different battle, yeah. you understand? So even for the few that are there, they are working. They really are. I, f- I feel like in the past two years, we've had like a lot more... Um, musicians who are women mm. than we have like 10 years back. True, true. Yeah, we have we have women in R&B, mm. women in rap, women yeah, in yeah, yeah. dance hall, women in like I'm a piano, you know. Mm. So I feel like we just need to understand that things take time. Yeah. And just create an environment where women can thrive mm. yeah, in the music industry. Um, for me, I believe that that's a lie because even like now, you have so many options of artists you can listen to. You want to chill, you want to dance, you want to vibe, yeah. you want to run, you want to work out. Yeah. You have I options. O- I always say it's ignorance Yeah, to claim that Yeah, because they're there. They're there. Yeah. You, just, you just have to look a bit harder. You have to. Yeah, and I think we just need to appreciate what's there. Yeah. Who are your dopest um, new acts? Um, out there right now, mm-hmm. you know, you spoke about the fact that if you want dance hall, if you want I'm a piano, yeah. I had some dope chicks here on this podcast earlier on in previous um, episodes, like Groovy Joe was yeah. here, uh, Olivia Mbani, Ezenia Manasse was mm-hmm. here. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, dope chicks. Who 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 are your d- dope artists or chicks that you're listening to in Kenya? Yeah, just, in Kenya or uh, okay. beyond even. So in Kenya, there's obviously Zinia. Love her music. I love Valerie so much. Mm. Um, Steph has a new record out. Yes. Love it. Uh, Brandy, I love what she's doing. Um, who else? There's so many. Nikita. Yes. Yeah. I feel like there's so many. I can't name all of mm. them. But I'm I'm so inspired by what they're doing. That's dope. Not just That's their dope. music, but I'm very inspired. That's dope. I'm asking every rapper um, if they have had other rappers, you know, say something about them. Like, yeah. have you had that um, kind of teeth in the industry with other mm-hmm. rappers saying stuff like, oh, she's not even that dope? Yeah. And then did you respond to them or did you have a diss track for somebody? 
Uh, <laughs> in all no. honesty. <laughs> no, in all honesty, no one's ever spoken on my craft. Hey. I swear. I don't know if they're scared You're of so me or no like that. No one's ever said anything about my writing. Maybe other things. Maybe things like, oh, she's too much or yeah. this and that. But never but about my But the big comments pen. that you're too much. Yeah. Why? Like with like, you know, I'm very sexy, very bold, very out there. And I think sometimes people find it intimidating. And you're unapologetic and about I'm that. And I'm very unapologetic. I don't, I don't care. <laughs> Go cry to your mother. I don't care. So people sometimes have a you problem know, You know, that. when you say, like, my mom is the first to watch my stuff. I was like, this, this mom is the mom every creative <laughs> needs. Because I'm like, when you're in those videos wearing the yeah. negligees and yeah. you're walking on the table, yeah. mom is liking that. Yeah. She's like, oh my God, you look very beautiful. I like the yes, hair. I like yes, the fit. mom. Yeah, she's, she allows me to be myself. Yeah. She's always been like that yeah. with us. But, but let's also, um, you know, style up. You know, let's call a spade a spade and let's mm -hmm. be serious about this. Like, this is entertainment and yeah. we all worship Beyonce. You know, Beyonce is sexy. Shakira is sexy. They are all... Sexy and bold. But then they and always bring no one this, is complaining that always, Beyonce is too sexy or something. They always bring this um, argument of we are African. There's values we have. There's things. I'm like, but we're the same African. Decades ago, we were walking around. we Africans taking in that other content and celebrating those other artists. Right? So if we were Africans and that wasn't our thing, we mm -hmm. wouldn't even listen to their music or play their videos. Never. You know, it's the same thing that used to happen back in the day before there was a shift between the media from traditional to new media mm -hmm. when you could only blow when your music was playing on a certain TV show yeah. and the guy would be like, nah, this is too explicit. But I'm like, you're playing Nicki Minaj. You know? So thankfully now, it's just like the fans are <laughs> all over the place. Yeah. So if you it don't play matter. my music on TV, I'm going to put it on YouTube or wherever and yeah. the fans will be able to access it. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So before we wrap up, uh -huh. I'm going to ask you to give me, give us mm -hmm. five tips to becoming a dope rapper. Five tips. Yes. Uh, number one, don't overthink. Okay. Number two, listen to a lot of music, not just rap music. Mm -hmm. uh, if you can, listen to Russian gospel, if you have to. Uh, number three, um, rhyming is everything. So you can do internal rhymes, external rhymes. Rhyming is everything. Number four, uh, sneak in a little melody if you can. People love that. And number five, have fun with it. Yeah. Nice. Simple. Simple. To the point. To the point. I love it. Thank you so much, Mandy. <laughs> Thank you, Nico. You're so dope. I wish you well in everything you do. Mm -hmm. Um, cheers to more dope albums, hit yeah. songs, sexy videos. Vibing and thriving. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Yeah, and just being unapologetic about being yourself and being ourselves. Yeah. I love it. I yeah. really love it. I feel that bold energy always with you. Like, even when you get into a song or a rap, just the energy, the, yeah. the way you come into the track, it's like you don't leave anything behind. And <laughs> yes. I love it. Yes. <laughs> anything Thank you want to um, tell, you know, your fans who are listening or those who are not your fans and mm -hmm. they're just discovering you and yeah. think you're dope? Uh, I'll just tell them that... Bigger and better is on your way. Uh, more diverse music, more sounds. Uh, no more collaborations, though. So. Uh, yeah, just that. And awesome. subscribe and support and stream my music. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much, Mandy. Thank you for That's having where me. we're wrapping VIP access with Aniko this week. Remember to watch all the other interviews with various other artists and creatives on my YouTube channel and listen to the podcast across all social media networks. I will be back with yet another edition of dope content coming your way. Ciao. VIP access, VIP access. with Aniko on Africa Loud.